These are a couple of old knives that I've just cleaned up for a friend of mine who's a grandmother. That will become important in a couple of minutes. When I got them, they had this very deep recurve right here that comes through years of sharpening on a butcher's steel. It had no point, it was fully rounded over, and it had no edge per se either, fully impacted, no cutting ability whatsoever. And the handles were also displaced and cracked and had actually come apart. So when you're cleaning up an old knife like this, you have a few things that you sort of have to decide on. And one is do you want to actually replace the handle scales, which is not that difficult to do. Um, and the other main concern is what are you sort of going to do in this area? And what are you going to do in regards to the main blade? I like to try to preserve as much of the knife as absolutely possible. So what I try to do is um, sand the handle down, uh, epoxy it, clamp it together for a couple of days, take it apart, have a look, re-sand it, put some linseed oil on it, and see how that holds up. Uh, if it doesn't hold up, and sometimes it won't because basically the blade underneath it will be too dirty and relatively difficult, there will be no bonding from the epoxy to the blade, and sometimes the wood is that bad that it will start to splinter in other areas when you push it back together. But this one came out relatively well, and I think this will last long enough for it to sort of, this handle, I think can be functional for a while yet. I flattened this area of the blade out to make it easier to sharpen on a normal bench tone. Took the big recurve out that was in it, and left a bit of a pseudo guard uh, right there. You can take this all the way back. And again, there's uh, benefits to doing that. You get more edge. But what you really got to be concerned about then is that the person that you're giving this to may have developed an instinctive method of using the knife with this sort of little guardish or unsharpened part here. And if you take it out, they may easily ramp their fingers up on that because they just, again, might be used to working with the knife with a finger up on that. So normally what I do is I flatten it out and just sort of work this back into a bit of a guard. I don't like the look of that personally. And again, if it was me, I'd take this all the way back and sharpen it. But, again, you have to be concerned about the person that's using the knife. Uh, reformed a point, put a primary sort of edge bevel on it and sharpen it up, and it came out uh, decently okay. And I was able to leave the finish that's on the main part of the blade untouched. So this looks, again, still has that very old historic look to it. And when I mentioned that she was a grandmother, I did that because this knife actually belonged to her grandparents, and they didn't buy it originally. So it's at least five generations old. She will pass it down to her daughter. I'm very sure of that. So this knife will have seen relatively shortly, in another decade or so, six generations of a family using it. And that's fairly amazing. So yes, it does have an extreme amount of wear. Uh, you can see how thick the blade stock was and how thin it's after getting out. But again, that's currently five generations soon to be going on six. Uh, this is another one owned by the same individual. These are both made by uh, uh, Dexter Russell, I believe. There's a Dexter stamp on them. This handle also has some splitting on both sides, but it hasn't cracked all the way through. You can normally do a very thin syringe uh, epoxy injection into this, which normally works, but you can see some epoxy, and I didn't think this was bad enough, so again, I just did a very light sanding and coat of linseed oil on it. And again, I like to do the least amount of work as possible to keep it in sort of the condition that it's in. Unfortunately, uh, when I ground the edge bevel on this one, the knife was actually so thick because you can see how much uh, thinner the blade is. So the, the edge bevel is actually moving up in the steel that was absolutely so thick, it really wasn't much of a knife anymore. Uh, and this blade is so narrow uh, that it's a shame to have that there because the potential is there. So what I had to do basically was flatten the whole grind out. And of course, the only way to do that is you end up taking the natural patina off. But I thinned the blade back to produce a decent level of thickness at the edge so they can cut well and be easy to sharpen. And again, sacrifices uh, patina, which was unfortunately at least five generations old, and that's not sort of a sort of last resort type deal. But without me doing that, the knife simply wouldn't cut very well. And again, I left this sort of exaggerated guard here. Again, if it was me personally, if it was my knife, I'd take this all the way back and just cut that big chunk of steel off. But again, you don't know. The person could be used to using the knife up in this area, working around this, which sort of pinch grips. And if you have that area blazingly sharp, they'll cut the fingers off themselves. Restored a very fine point, and now again you've got a relatively heavy sort of, you know, uh, utility knife and a relatively stiff but workable fillet knife or light sort of vegetable peeling knife. Currently on five generations, very shortly going on six. The other thing that I will mention about this is while these knives are extremely easy to grind, they're usually notoriously difficult to sharpen, and that's not because of the steel, but because of what has been done to the steel. Uh, the patina that's on it is just rust, it's just oxidization, that hits the edge as well. So when you start working on the edge, you all of a sudden get these big pits coming out of it. 
So you'll sharpen it, and as you sharpen and start moving into steel, randomly you can just hit those uh, pieces of oxidization and the edge just crumbles and breaks away. The other thing is because they've been used so extensively, and I mean like you'll even see hammer dents on the spine of these, you can see it right here. Um, the edge has just been smashed and rolled and dented for years and years, again five generations. So the edge is in a pretty weakened condition from all that bending and smashing. So when you start sharpening it, you get huge burrs form that are very, very uh, tenacious and difficult to remove. And ideally what you want to do is just grind all the steel off. Like just say to yourself, okay, fine, I'm going to get rid of that problem and grind another millimeter of metal off the edge and get back to quality steel. But again, this is an old knife. You're trying to sort of preserve as much of it as you can. So normally I sharpen it to the point you can't leave an edge with that big floppy burr on it. Obviously it's extremely weak. And even if you grind the burr off, if the edge formed with a huge big burr, even if you grind the burr off, that edge that's left behind is very, very weak. Because again, if that steel formed a burr that easily, the steel is weak. So normally I'll sharpen it, cut the burr off, sharpen it, cut the burr off, sharpen it, cut the burr off, until the burr is very minimal. Until I can't actually see it being formed. And once it gets to that point, I'll say, okay, fine, that's about it. And then I'll say, I'll leave the edge. Once I cut that burr off, then I'll leave the edge with that. And again, because you're just trying to minimize the amount of work that you're actually doing, and you don't want to grind off another millimeter of steel off the edge. Or again, I don't, because my perspective is always trying to leave these with as little work you can do as possible, trying to minimize what they actually look like. 